St. Andrew's College is an affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. And as we prepare for this No Gala Gala, we acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. This verbal acknowledgement is one concrete action that symbolizes our commitment to the work of reconciliation. Friends, welcome to the second St. Andrew's No Gala Gala. It's a gift to be able to welcome you back into this chapel and this time to share with the music and poetry of Greg Torwalt, our own registrar, and it is a blessing to have him. I just want to share with you at the beginning that though video magic will be used, I want you to know that there are pieces throughout this where we have ensured that protocols for the pandemic are followed and that even though there's video magic, we all were safe and followed what we needed to do in order to offer this time of reflection and music of perhaps even rocking a little bit. So thank you for being here. So as we begin, I want to pause for a moment and just share a brief update with you about where the college finds itself. The last time we met in the first No Gala Gala, the college was just completing a long and joyful journey of missional discernment. And I'm excited to share that that missional discernment has come together in a strategic plan that we're beginning to live out. And that living out is exciting. We're beginning to talk with our partners about closer curriculum alignment. We're talking with our international partners about how to use what we've learned in the pandemic to be able to reach out beyond the walls of this college into the world that longs for this prairie theology of justice that holds up creator's diversity. And so as you engage as supporters of the college, please know that your givings help us to be not only what we have been, but to be able to pivot into a future that reaches through the gift of the online environment to share the very learning that continues to unfold here at St. Andrews. And so for this second No Gala Gala, as we did with the first that featured our musician in residence music, Tana Schmidt, I again invite you to just make space to be, whether you're sitting with loved ones, whether you're with your congregation, whether you're sharing this in a streaming or whether you're watching it recorded. We're going to invite you to now into a time with Greg and his music and his poetry. Greg reminds and challenges us that sometimes being at the mountaintop, we lose sight of what's important. And so we're going to take a walk down from the mountain with Greg into his music. We're going to walk into the hills of creation, of puffy clouds, and we're going to ask ourselves some questions. We're going to ask you some questions. Who are you? What does it mean to be beloved? And ultimately, how do you care for yourself and how do you offer compassion in a world that longs for such messages of hope and promise? Welcome once again to the No Gala Gala. So let's get started. As we take our seats, I'm very excited to share in this time of exploring Greg's music and the place where creation and compassion remind us that we're all together with Sean our recruitment officer for St. Andrew's College. But before we start, we're just gonna head down to the kitchen for a couple of words from our pastor in residence, Janet Clark. Welcome to St. Andrew's No Gala Gala, a conversation and concert with the wonderful poet and musician and registrar, Greg Torwalt. My name is Jan Clark and I'm the pastor in residence here at St. Andrew's. Thanks to all of you for being here. Many of you have been here in this beautiful kitchen over the years for conversation, for parties, farewells, conferences, speakers. I like to be here in this kitchen. For the past three years, the MDiv students and I would bake bread in here as core group. Well, on this year, core group has become core community and we've moved online. We've gone from five students here in place to 17 students from all across Canada. Principal Richard is a partner to this, and our creative team includes Becca Whitlaw and Greg Torwald, who keeps us organized and connected. It's a rich and heartening time, and the students are quite amazing. At the beginning of this particular year in the fall, because students' lives had been so upended, we wondered, is this a lost year? Is this just a year to get through? Is this a stupid year? 
And though we say yes sometimes, really, the answer is no. It's a pilgrimage with Creator. It's a pilgrimage into meaning. It's a pilgrimage into presence. As a core community, we use scripture and art, poetry, music, silence, and symbols to work with the great themes of life and faith. And some of the themes we've been looking at this year are pilgrimage, justice and love, boldness, trusting God, living authentically, and lately, living unbound. We looked at the Lazarus story at our last gathering. Lazarus all bound up and the movement that Jesus invites him to. The invitation of Jesus to move from shade to light, from death to life, from meaninglessness to meaning, from all that binds us as people and as a community to wholeness to the open plain. So, all that keeps us from being who God needs us to be. So we talked about those bonds and how we can unwind. Unwind our racism, unwind our ageism, unwind our personal things like resentments or judging others or not feeling worthy. We are unwinding. to the heart of things. Greg's work addresses this expression and movement of spirit in an evocative and alive way. I would like to invite all of you into a time of silence and meditation as we move toward Greg's music. We are going to just rest in silence and just listen allowing for integration. So I'd invite you to close your eyes, take a couple of slower breaths, carry the breath with softness and ease. Nothing to fix, nothing to change, just rest, carry the calm. So if you open your left hand, and in your left hand, receive the memory of a place in nature that you love, where you feel peace. Open your right hand. In your right hand, receive a story of Jesus that gives you inner confidence or inner peace. Just receive. So carry your place and carry your knowing. We're all on a pilgrimage together. This is what we carry. Always carry the light. Always carry the light. Darkness fade, let it slip or let it slide. A lighter cloud allows for more sun to shine. And always carry the head above the shoulder line. Visions may fall. reach high and always carry the bread with softness and ease let it flow like a river from your crown down to your feet and always carry the calm and move with the breeze carry 
So that song is called Always Carry. It's on my first album, uh, my first solo album, I'm In It, Volume 1. And I released that album the end of August 2020. And uh, that song I like to, like to play quite often in my living room. I'll grab my guitar and just pick it up and strum along. It's a nice uh, pick-me-up song. It reminds me to keep my head up. And uh, uh, there's a line in the song about, about breath and letting the breath flow from your crown to your feet. And uh, that's why I have this thing on my head here. It reminds me to keep my head up. It's kind of like my security blanket. I've had this for like 10 years, and I'll wear it on my wrist sometimes when I'm recording, or I'll wear it for shows, and it it uh, reminds me to, to be present and also to focus on like on my crown, on my head, where I feel like that's where kind of the inspiration can flow through me a little bit better. <laughs> and uh, and it, that song speaks a lot about nature, and so does this next one. It's called From Ocean to River Blue. And this second song, it's going to be, it's an unreleased song. It's going to go on my next album, my next solo record. And I really like it. It uses a lot of nature imagery. Uh, and it's inspired by a song by Lauren Hill called Everything is Everything. And the Miseducation album, I listened to a lot as a kid and still listen to it a lot now. And um, I remember that line, or that song, Everything is Everything. The line never really made sense to me, but... As I'm getting older, I'm starting to understand interconnectedness more, and that's what this song's about. So uh, this one's called From Ocean to River Blue. that made me laugh there's a there's a line in the middle where it's like i know you know i know and whenever i sing that i always feel like oh you're gonna you're gonna mess that up you're gonna mess up the order but i mean 
The next song is called Yesterday, and that makes me think a little bit about it's okay to make mistakes because you learn, learn from them. So this next song is called Yesterday. Uh, this was also written the same weekend as Always Carry. I was at a songwriting camp out at uh, Arlington Beach Camp, La Last Mountain Lake. And that was September 2019. And I wrote this song on the beach, looking at the sky, watching the clouds go by, and just reflecting on how I got to that point in my life. All the choices I made, all the experiences that I went through, all the people I met, the lessons I learned that led me to that beach, to be sitting on the beach with a guitar, writing a song, feeling really grateful and happy to be there. And it made me really appreciate all of yesterday, everything I had gone through. And um, the, this song to me, the meaning is constantly changing because yesterday is constantly moving because, uh, or y you know, yesterday is always the next day behind you kind of. So I'm always going through new things. So when I play this song, it allows me to reflect on, on where I'm currently at. So it's a, a fun jazzy tune. Yesterday, the clouds, they seemed so close to me. Today, they seem so far away, distant, purple, gray, pop, pop, pops, pattern the horizon. In. And yesterday, my hands could touch. Today, my lips can just discuss. Yesterday, it's clear to me I was where I was meant to be. So Greg, thank you so much for that first set. Uh, it, it, it's amazing how the prairie context is grounded in there. And for St. Andrew's College, knowing where we come from, 
I think, has really informed how St. Andrews understand itself. And as I was listening to your lyrics, it's clear how central nature is to you. And in particular, in the, in the line when you say, I know, I know there can be bad days full of bad news. There can be hard news full of hard trials. How does your connection with nature and the process of writing allow you to not get stuck in that hard news and those bad times? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think looking at nature, seeing, especially like spending a lot of time by the river, watching the river flow by. There's a song on the Waves album. I was thinking of playing it, but uh, I, I obviously am not going to, <laughs> but it's called Change, and it was it uses nature metaphor as well, um, talking about the river flowing by and how the clouds are allowed to, they can't hold their shape, so like clouds were allowed to change. So just looking at nature and how nature is constantly changing and evolving has made me think about how, um, yeah, like there's going to be hard days, there's going to be bad days, hard times, hard trials, but we're always evolving and things are, there's seasons and stuff too. So looking at, at nature um, has really allowed me to self-reflect and go inward more using using nature to ground myself in that. Um, yeah, and then like in the, in the song yesterday, there's that piece about the clouds, the puff, puff, puffs pattern, the horizon, and that I think of like how... Um, you know, like when you're meditating, you can watch your thoughts go by like a cloud. So that that line to me is just watching like, yeah, you might have something that's bothering you. But if you can just watch the thought go by like a cloud going by, um, it'll it'll move on and it'll become yesterday. So it'll influence your life where you're at now. But just like nature, things are always always moving. And, and the idea of impermanence is something I really had been thinking a lot about when I was writing these songs and the and some of the too soon monsoon music on waves and just yeah nature was something that really allowed me to to understand that a bit more thanks for that Greg um, the word impermanence it's a it's a fascinating and challenging word and one of the things that I appreciate about your music is the the manner in which the universe is threaded throughout um, and that sense of impermanence and yet at the same time, you use two words that uh, lead me to this question. You use the word yesterday, and everything is everything. And in the song, From Ocean to River Blue, you end in the last verse in this way. I've learned that with you, all of it is connected. From ocean to river blue. I'm wondering who you is in that song. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, and that song that's that's something I've thought about a lot when I when I was writing that song and when I when I play it too I, I do reflect on who the you is and I think the you is myself. Sometimes it's talking to myself about and you know I've I've been on a journey with myself learning more about who I am, but also it can be whoever I've learned that with all the people that I've been interacting with in my life. They've allowed me to to learn this idea of interconnectedness and um yeah the you is is everybody that i've been on this journey with or <laughs> nature too or the trees or the flowers or the bees all those are i consider to be you and also me <laughs> Kent, Baz here. Just locked myself out of my house, which feels right for this pandemic we're both going through right now. And as I've just been sitting here with my cat, Freddie, waiting to get let in, I, uh, I've been thinking about St. Andrews and about my time at this college and how much of a change it's made in my life. And I just want to reach out and kind of see where you're at. What are your thoughts on St. Andrews so far? Hey, Baz. Sorry I keep missing you. I've been pretty busy doing a bunch of, uh, you know, theology student stuff. You know what I mean? I've been thinking about St. Andrews College though. To be honest, it took me a long time to build up the courage to go, go to even go to St. Andrews College. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's weird to even think about being called to ministry. 
let alone trying to explain it to anybody else. But at some point, it just didn't feel like it was a decision for me anymore. It was just the direction that I was headed and it felt right. But it wasn't ever really something I chose all on my own. Does that make sense? I guess that's what they call part of that call of God thing. What's your take on all this stuff? Yeah, call of God is right, Kent. I I remember just looking at all the options that the United Church had to offer and to decide which seminary I wanted to go to. And ultimately what it came down to was when I called St. Andrews with a question, Greg answered the phone. It wasn't an automated message. It wasn't like some system. It was just one person and he was able to help me out and it was awesome. And then on top of that, when I called back for the second time, same guy. And he was like, oh, hey, Vance, nice to hear from you again. And I just like knew right then that's the college for me. Um, what else has been on your mind around St. Andrews? Has there been anything that really stands out to you as unique? It's kind of intimidating and inspiring to think about all the people who went to St. Andrews before us and those who will come after us too, I suppose. It's like that cloud of witnesses watching over us, watching over your shoulder and encouraging you at the same time. It feels like we're connected to all these generations of servants who had the exact same questions about faith and about leadership. They wrestled with the same doubts. They nodded off in the same corners of the library. And they stayed up all through the night worrying about the exact same things that keep up us up at night. All the responsibilities of ministry that lay ahead. And for some reason, they're willing to entrust us to share the good news of God's love for the world with all the, all the generations that are still coming. What are they thinking? What do you think, Baz? You're right. What were they thinking? Like, that being said, and to add to that, like, there's something at St. Andrews for everyone. And, like, we all fit in here. I haven't met anyone at this school who's anything like me. And I think everyone can feel that way. Because St. Andrews kind of just meets you where you're at. Some people have known they wanted to go into ministry and theology their whole lives. And there's some people like me who are just figuring it out, like, right now but I can still take classes that really excite me and I can hone in on my own interests and my classmates, they feel the same way. It's pretty unique, especially in such a small college that's wildly connected to like the rest of the Saskatoon Theological Union. But how would you describe St. Andrews, Kent? describe St. Andrews College. The faculty and staff and students were all unique and special and children of God and blah 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 blah. But I feel like I'm part of something so much bigger than myself when we're there. There's something hopeful and beautiful and painful and challenging going on. We're following a path that doesn't make sense. We're dreaming visions that the world says are impossible. And we're, when we're proclaiming love and peace and justice with this sense of hope and belief that seems ridiculous. And yet, there's a whole bunch of other people there with me. And so we can't all be crazy, right? Right? God must understand that the whole is always greater than the sum of the parts. That's why I'm there. So I'm going to play some Too Soon Monsoon songs. Too Soon Monsoon is a band I've been in since the end of 2016. And uh, when I got this job at St. Andrews College, I knew I'd be back to Saskatoon, planning to move back to Saskatoon. So uh, I wanted to start up a band. So I put an ad on Kijiji and looking for a bandmate. And Nathan was the first to reply. So we were talking a bit, sending kind of song ideas or just showing what we can do musically. 
uh, through voice notes, and we decided to meet up in his garage, and, and then just kind of went from there. We started playing shows, touring a bit, and uh, putting out some music. And this, this first song I'm going to play is the first, re first song that Too Sweet Monsoon ever released. We, uh, yeah, we recorded it the end of 2016. There's this CBC Searchlight contest, and we were really excited to enter it, so we quickly recorded it and made a music video at Capitol Music Club. Uh, so it's a, it's a fun kind of time capsule of this little period of time. So, yeah, and I knew there was one other thing I wanted to say about this song, because it's got a funny connection to my youth. Uh, the song's called Wandering, and it, there's a, a line in the song, I wander, or I wonder, yeah, um, it, it plays on the, the words wandering and wondering, and when I was younger, I, had a, I used to take singing lessons and go to music festival competitions and sing and get adjudicated and stuff. And this was a song, there's a song called I Wander As I Wander Out Under the Sky. And I was like 14 years old and my voice was kind of changing and stuff. And there's this one long sustained high note in the song that I was always so nervous for. And then sure enough, during the performance, my voice cracked really horribly during the, <laughs> the high note. So whenever I play this song, I think back to, back to that that performance, but this song, yeah, it's got, it's inspired by, by that song. song to play there's a while a while there were me and Nate we didn't didn't really like playing that song because we played it so often in our first year or two of the band so we kind of dropped it from a lot of our sets but um not recently because we haven't been playing together in a long time but when we were still playing at the beginning of 2020 we were bringing that song back in because it's just got a really nice nice drum beat especially so we'd use it to open shows sometimes uh 
I'm going to play another. It's a throwback song, but a throwback Too Soon song, but it's, a, it's also <laughs> an, a brand new Too Soon Monsoon song, which is, I'll explain how that makes sense. But uh, when Nathan and I first decided to get together and, and try jamming t um, in the fall of 2016, he, uh, I was quite nervous. I'd never been in a band before. I'd never played with other like musicians, really. I've always just done solo solo stuff and it, I didn't even know like how to jam or what it was like to go to go to a jam like what you're expected to do at a jam or a rehearsal so um, Nathan was still at work and I was done work so I was sitting outside the college and I was listening to one of his drum beats and I was like okay if I can just write out some lyrics then at least I can bring something to the jam and we have like one little thing I could suggest that we <laughs> work on so at our first practice this was not our first practice our first time playing together this was the, a song that we wrote together and it's called Crawl and we've played it at our shows quite often but it's never really felt right on a re record yet but uh, we recorded it earlier this earlier in 2020 and it's going to be on our next full length album which is coming out later this year so this one's called Crawl. Time to tell it though The water is rising And the birds are flying low And everyone is running Got fire moving through their bones Time can't come crawling Back to you anymore No, the moment is gone I said it won't what we're always told and don't step out of line but but try to be original original and do what you want to oh, but don't you don't you disappoint your folks and play by the rules so oh, you can live like a criminal time can't come crawl Barely played that one solo. That's uh, it's really 
maybe played it just a couple times practicing before. I wasn't going to put it in the set, but yesterday I was in the chapel practicing, and I thought, ah, oh, this would be a cool song to try out. It's a fun one to play on the, on the keys. Uh, this one's from our, this next one's called Growing Up. It's from our 2019 album called Waves. We provide what we absorb, we absorb what we provide. And that title, um, that title itself is about the idea of interconnectedness, the idea of what you're giving off is what you get back. Um, and what, you know, the energy people are giving, giving to you is often what you're absorbing and giving back to them too. So um, this song is about that idea. It's called Growing Up and it's about, um, about the idea of, you know, as you grow up, you start to maybe lose touch with people close to you or you lose touch with the, the passions or the dreams you had as a, as a younger kid or as, a, as someone, as a teenager, you know, some of the, the goals you had, you can lose them along the way, the way of life. And um, also about the idea that, you know, our thoughts create our reality. So if we're, it reminds me to be really conscious of what I'm thinking because those small things snowball into, into bigger bigger things. There's a line in this song I really like. It's, um, if a spark can ignite a, b or uh, a thought can start a war, like a spark can ignite a bomb. And um, that, that part of the song really makes me think of how those little things can really create, create what we're experiencing. <laughs> It's hard to do, lose touch with those who were once so dear to you. It may seem there's less time every day and more distractions to waste time away. If thoughts can start a war Like a spark ignites a bomb We need to rediscover Get back in touch with each other We need to pay attention Show affection intention because growing up well it's inevitable I can't turn back it's too long of a road mm -mm. it may seem there's less time every day and more distractions to waste time away But if thoughts can start a war Like a spark ignites a bomb We need to rediscover Get back in touch with each other Affection, have intention. We need to make an effort. It's not enough, it's not enough to suggest it. Oh, we need some sweet redemption. Well, don't you think? Don't you think it's time to grow up? Welcome everybody down here in the main lounge. Sean and I were just talking about that we actually think we should be the two grumpy old guys from the Muppets um, in the chapel, but that's another conversation. 
So, Sean, I've been uh, thinking in the middle of the set as we're taking a break um, about Greg's music and um, th that mountain time, th that mountaintop metaphor and coming down into the valley. What does that mean for you being down in the hills in creation in the green as you're out there discerning where people's leadership might be called to a place such as St. Andrews? Well, you know, the, the image that Greg gives us is like the, yeah, the green on the hills. It's not a great big thing, but the horse looks at that green hill and sees grass that the horse is just in awe of. And as I sort of survey our small hill, hill of St. Andrews, um, what I am in awe of, what is green and growing around here, is the sense of community. That's one of the th really important things that I've noticed, especially among the students, um, but throughout the whole throughout the whole of the St. Andrews community, a sense of people looking out for each other through tough times, um, a sense of everybody having gifts, skills, talents that are getting tapped into in these challenging times. Um, so yeah, people really looking out for one another, I think. And that sort of care has been really evident to me in my first, um, you know, first three or four months here as recruitment officer. And it's the type of care that when I talk to people outside of the institution and outside of the church as well, a sense of communal well-being that the whole world needs to experience in these times of alienation. So Sean, we've been talking about Greg's music. We've been listening to Greg's music. And we're also recording, which is different than how galas are usually used. And as you may or may not know, we may or may not have outtakes with this. And so I'm wondering, as you're out there discerning and helping people answer whatever their vocational call is, what does it mean for people to recognize that this is a human journey? It isn't something on the mountain that people are called to be in community. What does that mean for the people that you're walking with? So one of the things that I really notice when I'm talking to folks who are, who are outside of the college at this point, but looking in um, and wondering if maybe this is the place for them, is that when they get a little glimpse of it, they realize that, that this place is not, um, it's not a perfect place. It's not like everybody has everything together all the time. There are people make mistakes from time to time. There are feelings that get hurt from time to time. There's a whole set of challenges that, um, that sometimes threaten to overwhelm, overwhelm people. I think sometimes from the outside, you can look at a, a beautiful you know, college building like this and just think that everything is perfect on the inside. But just like everything else in life, and Greg's referred to this in his music quite a bit already tonight, um, it's not perfection. It's not perfection at all, but there's grace in the midst of it. And that's what I'm finding when people see glimpses of the grace in the midst of our community. Um, they know that there's something, there's something alive and worth really looking at in coming here. And isn't that a gift in this time of the pandemic? Thanks, Sean. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to play a couple more songs from the Waves album. And the cool thing with that album is that the track order pretty much is the order that the, the songs were written. Uh, this one's called Mountains of Blue, and this was written about a painting, a Lauren Harris painting. He's a group of seven artists that was in, in the Raimi Modern when it first opened. And when Chris and I first moved back to Saskatoon, we lived really close to the river. So I'd come back from work, and I'd go for walks by the river and go to the art gallery, check out art, and walk back to the house. And it was just really nice a nice practice I had of going out in nature and looking at art and coming back. And uh, the first time I went to the gallery, this painting like just drew me in like a magnet. I was like, I walked right to it, checked it out for like 10 minutes, just loved it. And uh, went back to it a few days later and noticed like all these parts of the painting that I had missed before. Like on the green hills, there's all these little individual trees that like I didn't even process when I was first looking at the painting, which was quite strange. and. It made me think about what else I'm missing, if I'm distracted or if I'm busy or if I'm uh, not slowing down. So then my walks back and forth along the river started to become a lot more special. I was a lot more present, present with nature and with, my, with myself. And uh, so this song's about slowing down, appreciating those little, little things.
Mountains of blue, mountains of green, skies of red and orange, every color you could dream. I see them when I take time to experience, appreciate what I have around me. Reveals the unseen Now I seek more Because I feel more When I experience Appreciate all I have around me Set everything around me Everything around me It could over It could overwhelm me Mountains of blue, mountains of green, skies of red and orange, every color you could dream. I see them when I take time to experience, appreciate all I have around me, yeah, yeah. everything around me, everything around me, it could over. So that middle part, that that was added um, just uh, I was, when I was writing that song, I was also thinking a lot about how, how our mind filters out certain things so that we aren't overloaded. So like we aren't overloaded by all this sensory stuff around us. And it made me think a lot about where we were trying to sonically create, like if you listen to the record, it does sound quite different than just the piano. There's vocals, there's different instruments going on. And uh, we were trying to sonically create a reference to the Willy Wonka scene where he takes the, the kids in the boat and it just like starts getting really kind of trippy and freaky and I remember as a kid just being so like overwhelmed by by that scene and um, so so we tried to push that into the song a bit and um, it makes me that song makes me think about how I'd rather be overwhelmed by beauty than than by stress or by by you know feelings like that uh, this one this next song was written around the same time as Mountains of Blue. Uh, it's called Stay Golden. And this one has a, quite the, the backstory to it. For, and it's a very, like, lyrically a very simple song, but um, it means quite a bit to me. And uh, it was written, like, there's a piece, there's, like, music uh, you'll hear throughout it, this kind of, like, that, that sound. And um, when I was... Uh, I think it was 2008, I was 18, 19, my grandma had passed away, and she always liked to come listen to my, she would take me to music festivals, listen to my singing, come to shows and stuff when I was a teenager, but she would <laughs> always say that she just liked to listen to me play on the piano, tinkle on the piano and stuff. Uh, so I had written this like nice m piano piece for her, but she never got to hear it, but I know she's hearing it, but um, I never got to play it for her while she was still still around and uh, so that song I really always liked the instrumental piece of it but never really I would try to add lyrics to it and stuff as I was getting older and it just never really nothing really stuck with it and then uh, my uncle Rick he was a school teacher and he passed away really suddenly around the fall that I w that we were starting to write this record and um, the band was starting to get really busy around that time we were rehearsing a lot and we were doing a lot of shows and uh, I remember just, yeah, like maybe not being as present with people in my life that I should have been, and especially with him, like he was really interested in our music, and I remember like 
he texts about things and I would ignore or not get back to him and it like oh it really bothered me after he passed away and um and before before he passed away he 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 was like oh you should write a song for this he's a school teacher for this adaptation we're doing of the outsiders he wanted me to write a song around the idea of stay golden pony boy and i never wrote the song i just kind of like brushed it off a bit and uh after he passed away i was really reflecting about being present and being more more present with my with my loved ones and uh so i put the music pieces of that music and the idea of stay golden and and just reflecting on on those experiences and it really helped me kind of um, heal from that and, and move through the grief a lot a lot easier and I still yeah I, I love this song uh, it, it makes me think a lot about them and um, yeah here we go in my daydreams I have eternity that's why you laughed and found me lost in my If you like, I'm wondering why I'm looking down at the corner of the piano. I got one little note of <laughs> what songs I'm doing next. This is a brand new Too Soon Monsoon song. We're putting out an album later this year. We recorded it live off the floor in a couple days. It was a really cool recording experience. Normally, when we were recording records, we'd spend like months 
tracking and Nathan would do the drums and I'd put piano over top and vocals and organ and all this stuff and it would it was a cooler way of recording but we found it kind of um, wasn't coming across like you know we were always playing in a garage we felt like we were a garage band and our chemistry was really really coming through when we were playing together so we wanted to try recording that way and uh, <laughs> even the recording process of like our last few records you we weren't easy on each other we would you know not be listening to one another how we wanted to record or how we wanted to write music so this song itself speaks to the relationship between me and Nathan but further it speaks to the idea of just being compassionate for yourself and and for others and it was written about a month after the the pandemic started um so yeah it's gonna it's gonna be our first release by the time this comes out the song will be out it it comes out on March 19th we're super excited about it um so yeah, I'm going to give it a go solo. It's called Be Easy.
Greg, I'm just loving this show, and I'm loving your music. Um, not only this this concert today, but uh, I I put your CD on in the car when I'm driving around, and I, it just sort of flows over me. So I really appreciate the the art and the spirit that you bring to this work. It's um, it's quite amazing. So be easy on me, please. Be easy. <laughs> you know that one just sort of flowed over me because I mean it's a hard world right now right mm -hmm. it's a it's a world full of um, of hard stuff that's not always easy whether mm -hmm. that's sort of the you know the crisis of pandemic and plague that we're living through or whether that's politics or polarization in society and, or just sometimes our own you know nasty natures to each other from time to time <laughs> when we get mm -hmm. tired and we get stressed like you named in the song um, but that refrain of, uh, and a, really a call, be easy with me. You know, in, in theology, of course, we've got a word for that. We call it grace. <laughs> and it's sort of at the root of everything that we think about and do in our practice. And I'm just I'm curious about what, what are you, your thoughts on this notion of compassion to mm -hmm. ourselves, to the world around us, to our sisters and brothers, our kin? What's... What does it mean to be easy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, th yeah. The the idea of being easy. I guess uh, like it, it. This song was written really early in the, in the pandemic. I was just sitting. You know, you're you're in your house with the with your partner, or your kids, whoever you're with, and everybody's going through. Maybe you know it was a people were going through stuff at the beginning and still are, and uh, it heightened stress, heightened. Um, you know, heightened anxieties. Um, you know, I've caught myself saying, like, Can just be easy on me. Just, like, I'm stressed out right now. And at the time, I felt like, before the pandemic, like, Nathan and I, too, in the band, we were really, like, starting to get to know each other a lot more. We were done the Waves album. We were relaxing. We were starting to get back into our groove of, of being a band. And we had Steve on bass. He was joining and practicing with us up at that time. And it felt like we were really like flowing and I was working on like some, you know, like meditation and yoga and I felt like I was really on a good path and then all of a sudden the pandemic hits and like I noticed like bad habits creeping up again and and I wasn't being compassionate for myself and um, and like, you know, there'd be conversations with family members or with people around me and you could tell that everybody was just a little bit on edge and, and still continuing to this time, people are rightfully <laughs> at that like, their breaking point at, at times and just recognizing that everybody's has their own story and their own journey. And, um, as we can learn more and be compassionate about people's journeys and where they come from and their, and their backgrounds and how they grew up and, and the experiences they face, recognizing that that influences who they are in the moment. And that influences the, their, the way they think or the way they approach, the way I approach, the way people approach situations. So, um, from like a very personal context, the song relates to like my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my bandmates, with my parents, with my siblings, everybody, my friends, and and just learning that um, if we can learn more about other people and if we can try and put ourselves into their shoes, we can be more, hopefully try to be more compassionate to others and it'll be, you know, maybe at the same time be more compassionate to ourselves too. So not excusing bad behavior, but um being aware that sometimes we're not you know just we're not perfect and it's it's okay to stumble and it's okay to make mistakes but yeah to learn from them and to grow but i think compassion for for yourself and in the past if you're if you're reflecting on things that you've gone through in the past i think a lot of people during the pandemic were in their thoughts a little bit more and still are like it's still going on but um maybe reflecting on things that they hadn't reflected on in a long time and that can bring up a lot of a lot of things and then it ricochets into into your outside experiences or your coworkers or your your partner or your kids or whatever so um i think it's important for everyone yeah to just just continue to be be compassionate for ourselves during <laughs> this this wild time yeah there's so much that i'd like to talk to you about 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 your work um it's it's interesting because we're here in a chapel and this is a school of theology and um and it's very interesting because your lyrics don't use specifically religious words. And yet, I just, you know, 
the spirit blows through them so powerfully. And I hear things like mindfulness, you know, and I, I hear you talk even just now about, your, you know, yoga practice and um, like what, so what, what are the sources that you are drawing on in your, in your creative process? Where, where's that coming from for you? What's, it feels like it comes from somewhere really deep. Yeah, I feel like, um, yeah, I don't use like God often in a song. I have one song on my solo album where I, where I do refer to God and in my poetry I have, I refer to God or to spirit a lot too. Um, but I find I can, yeah, like to be able to see spirit flowing through, through nature, I can, I can feel it. So I'm not necessarily having to reference God, but I feel like I'm referring to to God through my music and I'm I even the word inspiration or inspire um makes me think about being in spirit like you know and bringing in the breath you're bringing in that spirit that that energy from God or the creator or whatever you want to whatever you call it I feel like it's all you know it all comes from the same source the same source energy so um yeah I feel like my music does have a lot of that it's very spiritual <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. thanks All right, so I have two songs left that I'm going to play. I'm going to go back to some solo solo work of mine. And I've been working on this project called the I Am In It Project. So it's about the idea that I can see myself in everything and what makes up me makes up other other living things. So it allows me to be more, more compassionate for others when I can put myself in their shoes and be more compassionate for nature and animals. And uh, I wrote a poetry book as well, my first poetry book. So I'm going to read a few poems and a couple of the poems in the book also I turned into songs so I'm going to play as my final two songs will be two of the the poems that I turned into to pieces of music and I don't normally do that normally when I'm writing music I'll hear like a melody or a line and then sit down at the piano or the guitar and start writing but these ones were just full poems and then I decided to put them into songs but um, yeah I'll, uh, I'll read a few few of my not necessarily my favorite, but ones that I thought are enjoyable to, to share today. Uh, this one's called, I run through the grass like a puppy. I run through the grass like a puppy. I stick my head out as far as I can, into the lilac bush. The small flowers freshly bloomed, tiptoe through my hair and peek into my eyes. I become completely consumed by their bouncy touch and rare scent. There are so few days to enjoy these lilacs in this cold Canadian condition. What in the world are you doing? Why are you doing that? The crow shouts at me. I turn to the obsidian bird with my freshly intoxicated eyes, and without saying a word, I reply, Why aren't you? This poem is called... Uh, this one. Call it what you want. Call it what you want but I can see it in everything. I see it in the lingering sun, holding on to the last few moments of light before diving into the depths of darkness. I see it in the ants as they tiptoe around the peony. Ah, an abundance of life, enjoying the silky mac matte tunnels and valleys its home provides. And this next one is called, this next poem is called Old Hometown. And this poem I wrote about my old hometown, my first hometown. And I had returned to, to the hometown for my cousin's graduation and I was there, I drove alone. I was, I was the only one who was able to go, go down there for my family that day. And um, so I stayed overnight and then the next morning I like drove around the town. I was looking at all, all the places that, you know, I used to run around or we would hang out with our cousins and stuff. And um, it was really interesting. There were pieces of the town that, you know, look exactly the same as they did when I was there as a young kid. And then they were, things that were completely different. So like the church we used to go to was knocked down and there's a new house there. And we drove by, or I drove by uh, our old home and we had like these, my dad had planted evergreen trees when we were young and they were like five, six, seven feet tall. And then when I got back, the, all of a sudden they're like, you know, like these 20, I don't know, I don't know my heights, but way, way bigger. So um, I wrote a poem about it. Just, I pulled over and wrote, wrote a few lines down and then I went back to Humboldt. My parents had a have a grand piano, so I sat down at the piano and uh, put a few chords down and then took the poem 
and put it to put it to this music. So I'll read the poem and then I'll play the play the song. So both of these songs aren't recorded. These two last two songs I'm going to play they will be on my next album, the next solo album, which is called I'm in it Volume Two. So this project is going to be three albums and then two poetry books and then the music videos. My wife and I like to make music videos. She's a photographer. She does videography. So we've been doing different video projects for, for some of the songs. So old hometown. Grandma's garden isn't in the same spot. The raspberry bushes are gone and Zion has been leveled for a new build. Change, change, change. Yellow, brown, orange remain on the old neighboring house, an old neighboring home. A reminder of youth, a reminder of youth, a reminder of youth, discovery, and fun. Ice forts, bicycles racing, butterflies, and leaning into lilacs. The old fence isn't as strong. The evergreens are five times as tall, growing old like the memories they hold. Growing old, growing old, growing old. Yeah, and there's a, like, as I read it now, a, like the yellow, brown, orange, that's a reference to to my cousin's home. So they lived right behind the church that was knocked down. So I drove by this church that was now knocked down and there's like this big, brand new, beautiful house on the lot. And then right behind the house is <laughs> my cousin's old home. They didn't live there anymore, but it looked exactly the same with the yellow and the brown and the orange paint. And, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a really special song to me. <laughs> it's called Old Hometown. <laughs> old fence isn't as strong the evergreens five times as tall growing old like the memories they hold growing old growing old growing old grandma garden isn't in the same spot the raspberry bushes are gone and zion has been leveled for a new built change This last song is the last poem that's in this book. So I made this book, I, I handmade copies, and I have a few left for sale. But I, I've made a few, a few uh, I think I did 20 in a first edition, and then another 20-some. So it's like a nice, nice handmade book. I 
kind of have sketches of like the original original poems inside and then I'd leave some some I'd add some notes and stuff for for people but this one's called I just want to be a mountain and this poem was written as the band we were touring the waves album so this would have been in the spring of 2019 <laughs> that like the recording process for that was so long like we started writing the album the end of 2017 so we were writing it for like six, seven, eight months, and then we would be practicing the songs to have them really tight to record them. So that was a, the whole process, and then we were recording. It took us like seven, eight months to record the songs, and then we'd be rehearsing the songs to tour them. So we were living with this album for like two years, and it was, it was fine. Like, it was fun, but it was also like kind of consuming and stressful and, um, you know, planning the touring, doing all the booking yourself too. It, it's a, it's a, it was a lot of, a lot a lot coming at us and um, it was hard to really enjoy the process and enjoy the recording and on we were coming back from Banff we had played a show in, show in Banff and Calgary on the weekend and that was kind of the end of that stretch of the tour and I was driving home and um, or I wasn't driving I was in the, the back Nathan was driving and um, looking out the window and there's these beautiful mountains and then this like <laughs> lone hill in the middle of the the field and this horse looking at the hill. So I was just kind of thinking about how, um, as a musician, I was always trying to become a mountain, always pushing for the next big thing instead of enjoying where I'm at and enjoying the journey and enjoying the moments. So that's something that I really am trying to do more and more and I still catch myself all the time, always you know, looking for the next thing instead of enjoying, enjoying where I'm at. So this is a little poem. It's written from the point of view of the hill looking at the mountain. I just want to be a mountain, said the hill to the sun. I want to impress like the mountain. I know I am little, but I have grown stone-cold veins. Still, the green grass clings to me. Still, the green grass clings to me. I worked so hard on my mountain vision. I did not enjoy what I had become. I made a hill. I made a hill like none other. Evergreens line my crown. In the middle of the pasture, the horse looks at me in awe. So I wrote this song, um, like I wrote the poem, and then about six months later, I just started playing guitar, so I was trying to write music on the guitar, so I opened up the poetry book, and this this uh, poem happened to just be laying there, so I thought, oh, I'll try strumming along with the two chords I knew at the time. So it's like, a, I, I call it my, like, I don't know, kind of my cowboy song. There's some whistling in it. I don't really have any songs that are along this this vein, but I'm still not really sure how, how the recording is going to be. I could see it being quite like a big, big band song too for the solo record. So uh, um, I'm going to play it in a, a kind of more of an upbeat style. It's called I Just Want to Be a Mountain. I, I, I just want to be a mountain. Wanna be a mountain, said the hill to the sun. Uh, uh. I want to impress like a mountain. I want to impress like a mountain. I might be a little, but I've grown stone cold in vain. Green grass clings to me. Still, the green grass clings to me. I work so hard on my mountain vision. I work so hard. I work so hard on my mountain vision. I did not enjoy.
that's it for me. Thank you, St. Andrews, for having me for the No Gala Gala. I hope you enjoyed the performance. It's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. My name is Greg Torwald. My solo project is Greg Ori. It's two names. So it's Greg and then Ori, which is a play on my full name, Gregory. And uh, our band's name is Too Soon Monsoon. Thank you. I feel a little warm. I need to maybe cook. That was, I felt a little nervous on that one. <laughs> of listening to the No Gala Gala. Blah, blah, blah. Yiddy, yip, ya. Giddy, ya. Woo! As we begin, and now, bloop, bloop. I'm Greg, who keeps us organized and well, connected. I think it's Remy Modern. Remy. 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 Hey, Remy. <laughs> oh, at this point, I'm really punchy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> that outtake moments, I need to think about that. <laughs> I don't know. No, let's go with something else. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Stadler! Can you believe they're going to play rock and roll music in this place? <laughs>